Can sex usually um, is defined by hookup culture, firstly, gay hookup culture, um, and the drugs that became available via online hookup culture. So, crystal meth, methadone, GHB, and GBL. There might be other things we use alongside it, like Viagra or Coke ecstasy and stuff, but they're not chemsex drugs specifically. And I kind of really want to explain why, because a lot of people really, really misunderstand this. Um, if you and I were going to be having sex on heroin, um, I apologise, it's not going to be very good. I'm probably kind of just going to go, you know, like that. Um, it's not going to be a furious nightmare of three-day sex bender. It's going to be very different because heroin serves a particular kind of purpose. It's not about having fun. It's usually about feeling safe, urgently feeling safe. That's kind of the, per the, the main purpose of heroin serves really well to a whole lot of people. It's not really about brilliant sex. So I apologise again if you and I were going to have sex on heroin. I'd be really bad at it. I wouldn't have a good time with me. Let's say um, I'm going to be having sex with you on ecstasy. So ecstasy is kind of like um, uh, an empathizer. So it would be like, uh, we probably kiss a lot and I'd tell you my whole life story. It'd be so amazing. Your skin would feel amazing under my fingertips. I would tell you my whole life story and you'd be interested because you're on that same kind of high and you'd tell me your whole life story and oh my God, we would connect on such a... We would have sex too and it'd be so sensual and kind and I'd probably be brave enough to tell you about my HIV status without fearing you rejecting me because that's what the dog does to me. Um, you wouldn't reject me because of my HIV status because you're feeling that empathizing thing too. And oh, it'd be nice. I, and when we both realize that we both like that same Brianna track, like, oh my God. <laughs> um, that's what sex from ecstasy is like. And I'd lend you my favorite pair of sunglasses in the morning because I kept you awake all night. And I, I'll probably never get them back and never see you again. But do you know what I mean? At the time, it's an empathizing drug and we connect. And I really wouldn't want you to catch my HIV. Not that you can, because I'm undetectable, but that plays in my subconscious sometimes. And you, because I care about you so much. That's what sex on ecstasy is like. It's not can sex again. If I'm going to have sex with you on crystal meth, wow, boom, my dopamine, dopamine receptors, are, uh, my dopamine is just flooding me. It's more dopamine than any other drug or activity on the planet can produce. And it's like, raging and you know what it's like and it's very powerful so I'm I feel good and this feels good and this feels good and that looks good and I want to touch that and I want to hit that and I want to do that and uh, because of the nature of the dopamine I'm onto the next thing the next thing I'm kind of insatiable not just sexually insatiable but everything insatiable I want the next thing I want more stimulation more stimulation and greater satisfaction and greater stimulation and you might not be enough for a while. We might, I might get sort of, I need more drugs, I need more drugs, and um, I know, then I need more people, and then I need more, let's change the porn, let's change the porn, and um, the porn isn't satisfying anymore, so we get more extreme porn. And it goes on, and more people, we get some more people, and then we get some more, uh, I need more Viagra, I need more methadone, I need more this. It's more stimulation, more things, onto the next thing. That's why the nature of chems do translate to chem sex, because it's... Uh, it goes, it lasts for three days. That's typically, you know, there's a 24 hour half laugh, so it's really hard to sleep. They keep you awake for a really long time. And this insatiable need for greater stimulation in sort of, in any environment you're in, whether that be porn, whether that be more drugs, whether that be more sex and more people, or pushing boundaries of what you find satisfying in sex, or pushing boundaries of what you find satisfying from the porn. Um, that's chems, and that's chem sex, and that's why ecstasy, it's not a chemsex drug because it, it doesn't translate to the kind of extreme stuff that, we, that we're seeing in chemsex behavior. And that's why heroin is not. Um, these drugs are really, really powerful and we really need a really particular skill set to manage them. So being able to define chemsex as what it is and not confusing it with sort of the, the, the awesome experiences we can have on different drugs like ecstasy, which has played a really important role in gay men's lives and in the bedroom quite a lot too. Um, heroin is, is a very different kind of thing. It's, it's not so much about sex. Alcohol can be used in many, 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 many circumstances. It's definitely always played a role in, in the sex we have, in the fun we have, in the life we have, in the self-medicating we do about unmanageable emotions and stuff. Um, but chemsex is pretty much defined by those three drugs that changed gay men's sex lives phenomenally as they became more available by hookup culture and grinder culture and over the last 10 years or so. So yeah, that, that's, that's the difference between chemsex drugs and non-chemsex drugs.